Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today is the day I wanted to show you some carvings that I've been playing with and maybe do one together. Um, I have been obsessed. I ordered some new, sorry about the crinkling, some more of these, let's just get rid of this, more of these um, lino cut pads, blocks, whatever you want to call them. I got a pack of 10 off Amazon and I have three left. So I thought I better film this video before I use them all. <laughs> uh, I've just been having so much fun. It's just so relaxing and um, I just love it. And I've been on this insect kiss, kiss, <laughs> kick for a while now and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, just so much fun carving these out and using them. I did some more florals uh just for starters i started with these guys something a little bit more simplified and then moved on to some bugs so the first bug i did was my bee which i thought turned out pretty good you know i'm not um not an expert carver by any means i dabble in a little bit of everything so i never perfect anything but uh i just have fun and um, some are winners and some are losers. And I just toss the ones that I screw up and start again. So this guy, I really love this one. And I really love this one. And I really love this one. And I'm just really thrilled with how they've turned out. So here is a little, just a little kind of folder I put together where I stamp. So this guy is here. This one here. So you can see that he's not perfect. He's got marks around him. He's got chunks missing, but I kind of like that look. Um, I, it is hand carved. It's not machine carved. This is the other guy, this flying guy. I love him. He's really fun. And again, nothing symmetrical really, just playing. Uh, I, I dug out his antenna here by accident. So again, still, still adds to the charm, I think. And what else have we got? Here's the first one of the flower ones that I did. The simplified ones I started with. Um, stamping. Here's the bee. So I think the bee turned out all right. He's he's a bit messy on the wings, but you can tell he's a bee. He's got a little charm to him, so I'm happy with him. There's the flower. And I just love carving my own stamps. Here is the... Oh, what's he called? Um, he's a beetle. A ladybug. So there he is. Yeah, he's all right. He's kind of cute. Screwed up on his legs here, but that's okay. And what else did I do? I uh, did the one big beetle, this guy. Thought he was kind of fun. So again, very messy. You know, um, lots of marks on there, but I kind of really like that rustic look. So I like to leave those behind. And I think that's all of them. Okay, so let's maybe do one today. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Um, maybe a, another beetle. So these are, you can buy these off Amazon. They are lino, lino um, I don't know what they're called, lino plaques or something. They're just, I get 10 of them. I'll try and remember to link the Amazon to it, the Amazon link to it if I remember. Um, but they're just soft. And they're nice to carve into. You can carve into anything. I have shown you how to carve into little old erasers and things like that. Anything soft enough that it doesn't damage your tools and you don't, and it's not too soft that you slide and cut yourself. So this stuff can get pretty slippery with a sharp tool. So you do have to be careful. Um, I have my tools here. So these are the blades I like to use. Um, I'll put them this way. So this is the cutter. So he just slices the edges for me. This is the wide gouge guy, so I can take away big chunks. Uh, this is the medium carving tool. So, and this is the small, which I just got. And I really love this because you can get those really fine lines. You can't get fine lines unless you have a fine line tool. So this is the one I just ordered. It's called Speedball. And I'll try and remember to link that too. And it has all the bits in the back that are sitting all over my desk. So it came with, I think, five or six. I think it came with five bits that you take and you can unscrew this piece and slide them in. So you get a, a couple of cutters with that, but this is the one I use. I took them out because that sound irritates me. So 
so I got rid of that. So really fun, small collection of tools. And again, you can have the one tool and just interchange the blades, but I was given a couple and this is the first one I bought, which didn't come with this super fine one. So I had to order the super fine one. Not overly expensive tools or materials. Um, more just more just fun, right? Just kind of uh, a small little hobby on the side, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Add to my collection, my husband would say. So what do we want to draw? Um, maybe we'll do a little guy here. Um, it's kind of like this version because I do love the wingspans on these. But maybe we'll do a little bit smaller. Or should we do another beetle? I don't know what to do. I didn't think about that part before I hit record. I guess I should have thought about that. I don't want to do a butterfly. I'd like to do some more interesting insects. I haven't got a stag beetle yet. Do I have a reference for a stag beetle though? I have my watercolor paintings here that I just did. I think there's a stag in here. Well, let's do this beetle, a longhorned beetle. Okay, let's do him. So I'll, I'll put the painting here so you have a reference to what it is I'm, I'm drawing. So we're going to make sure that he fits. So I'm going to put, I'm going to do him pretty big. So I'm going to do a, just a center line, kind of guide me half and half. So I split the beetle right down the middle. And then his tallest things are his little legs here. So I know I can start his head about here. And I'm just going to draw him out. So I'm not going to do a huge, uh, slow process on how I draw. You can sketch whatever it is <coughs> excuse me that you want on these guys so you want to bear in mind when you're carving what's negative and what's positive space so in this case the negative space is what you're going to carve away and the positive space is what's going to print so i'm going to just draw him out for starters I have a dry throat all of a sudden, talking too much. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, I do have water. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So I'm not coughing in your face. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to just draw him out here. Kind of feel him out. Might make him a little bit longer. And then make sure I've got them centered enough. It's got these kind of boxy, oh, nice boxy shell. I like shoulder pads. <laughs> All right, now he's got these massive antenna that come out. I'm just gonna draw myself a line as to where I want them to stop. That way I know where to where to draw and then I'm just going to draw the segments here I don't want to do too much detail I'm not the best carver in the world and I don't have a lot of patience but I do want to put some detail in and I get frustrated easy when when there's too much detail, I find it's a little overwhelming until you get more practice. And then you get better at it, of course. But practice makes perfect. And you just keep playing and you can carve anything. And what I love about homemade carvings is they're unique. No one else is going to have them. They're really fun to share. So if you're trading in the mail or whatever you can send one of these because they're not heavy so i'm going to give him his little arms here his front legs i might change that a little bit don't like the look of that This one's missing that little elbow. 
doesn't erase all that well. So it comes out and then goes up. And then goes up and out. That's better. Better. Give him his hind legs. So think proportion-wise how big this beetle is, and how big his legs would need to be. Uh, normally I would put his leg through his antenna here, but for carving purposes, I'm gonna simplify my life a little bit and separate the two. So other things when you're designing your stamps to bear in mind is where you're carving and how much kind of you're overlaying the more overlaying, the more complicated the carve. And then those little hind legs here. And he's got these sticky little spiky back legs. I love the legs on these beetles, on Morse beetles, with their kind of clingy little hook claws here. I think they're so fun. So, normally I would clean that up a little bit, but I think I'm pretty confident on where I want to carve. So I want, I have to think about the space that's going to print. So this is coming at, all these negative spaces are coming out. And then to show these kind of details, I have to decide, do I want this to print black or do I want it to be clear in there? So this I would probably print black. I want to figure out, do I want to do an outline and have this print white? Do I want it dark and put some lines in it? Which is probably what I'll end up doing. So I'm gonna put the lines in it to remind me not to carve this out. I want his legs to show up black, so I'm gonna carve around those. I'll probably put some texture in this piece. This I want to car I want to leave black. So it helps if I kind of color it in and I know don't don't cut it. Okay, let's give it a go. So I usually start with my little guy. I'm going to move him out of the way now. Start with my little guy and try to get into the more delicate pieces. So this one's not too bad. They're not, there's not a lot of space that's kind of close together. But you do want to take your time and stop around the parts that you don't want carved. And I basically just work my way around all the way down. So I don't have editing software. I'm sorry, I don't know how to speed this up, but you can speed it up. If you go into the little section there, you can fast forward and see the end result or halfway through because I don't have a speed up option when I'm carving here so I this will be in real time I'm afraid I'll try and do it as fast as I can and I always try to remember to carve away from myself that's very important because this stuff can be slippery and it will these tools will cut right through your fingers they are razor sharp, which is the whole point. So I like to try and go around most of my drawing with this finer one until I've carved a whole section like this. And then I'll go in with my wider V here and start taking out the material. Take away all that negative space. So you really kind of have to plan out your your um, stamp just a little bit when it comes to what you want to print. And that's where designs come in because no two stamps would ever be the same that way because you might want this to stamp clear or you might want it to stamp solid, solid and I'm going to stamp it where there's lines in it. So you can see you can get more than one design out of one image. So I'm just carving away. There's some really good YouTube videos on 
tips and tricks um, but I'm just learning myself and just having fun with it and showing you that it's not terrifying if it's something you've always wanted to start or something you've always wanted to try it's not that intimidating I find it very relaxing I do it at, I do it at night I'll just sit here and carve play with different things and oops and just come up with some ideas so right now I'm really on this kind of bug kick I really like them I've always liked bugs I have a bug collection my husband asked me a couple of years ago what I wanted for my anniversary and there's this store in the mall and I said I want the collection of beetles <laughs> that are framed and it was this beautiful atlas beetle massive thing with his wings open and he was encased in a frame and he was sourced where he's not you know murdered he dies naturally and then he's framed and uh, I made sure of that because that would upset me if they're killing them just to put them in frames but they're not this company anyways so uh I told my husband that's what I wanted he th thought I was crazy but he got it he's like okay if that's what you want that's what I want. Bugs <laughs> for my wall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most women maybe would have said diamonds or... <laughs> but I don't wear jewelry, so he's off the hook for that. I'm not, I love making jewelry, but I never wear it. So he lucked out there. He's got a cheap wife. <laughs> Though, I do cost him in art supplies. Every time I go out, I come home with something, whether it's used or not. He's like, you sure you got enough? But we all have our weaknesses. And miners, art supplies and craft supplies. And that's why I started this channel, because I, I'm constantly trying something new. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to share it. Uh, I get bored very quickly, so I like to try new things all the time. Uh, so I'll go through a sewing kick, and I'll go through a knitting kick, and then I'll get bored with that and move on to, you know, carving. And then I'll get bored with that, and then I'll move on to doing printmaking, or I don't know. There's just always something new to learn. And my newest thing right now is uh, rug hooking. I was at uh, recently at a Bracebridge, what's it called? Fiber and Knitting and Fiber Arts or something festival. And of course it's all knitting and wool, all that stuff. And there was a woman there showing how to rug hook and I was instantly addicted so I've done one so far and I'm starting to really enjoy it I'd like to make something to hang on my wall when my house is done <laughs> one day and so that's my newest thing so it was it wasn't overly expensive I just needed the hooking tool and I needed the uh the mesh the special mesh I can't remember what it's called right now that you hook into. And I had a bunch of wool left over from other projects. So it wasn't overly expensive to start that project. And I did a little rug, kind of like a bathroom size rug. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna do some more. I'm gonna use my Y tool here, just kind of remove some of this excess. So again, definitely keep your fingers out of the way. Because it, it, it's slippery when it's, when you're on a roll like this, it gets pretty slippery and it slips and off it goes into your hand. So I'm just etching away at what I don't want stamped. I'm just working my way around. Use this guy now. I dig away some of this. Negative. 
space here. Go around one more time and then I'll probably just cut it with scissors. So what I do find though is um, once you've cut away the bulk, it's a lot harder to carve details in. So because there's no there's no resistance, so that's something to bear in mind when you go to um, carve away the excess. Just want to make sure you've got as much detail as you can before you do that. What I find challenging about this little guy that I bought is the way you can dig down deep. Uh, with pressure if you push really hard so if you push like this and then you push like this it dives in so that was I had to learn how much pressure to use on this little guy and oh screwed up there So it went over the line. You can see I cut the line there. So let's see if I can correct it on the other side. So right coming up here, I'm going to go a little less. Try and bring that line back. We'll see. We'll see if I manage to save it or not. And if not, uh, no big deal. So are you like me? Are you uh, the kind of person who has a million hobbies? <laughs> a million hobbies in no time? But that is why I started this YouTube channel, just to share ideas, processes. Most of all, as an art teacher, and I do teach a lot of classes, um, I find a lot of people are just plain intimidated to start something. They're worried about failing or wasting their money and time. But if it's something you've always wanted to do, and of course it is in your budget, to try it, then what have you got to lose, right? You might just surprise yourself. And there's so many YouTubers out there that can teach you so much just by watching them and they'll they'll show you the mistakes they've made like for example a lot of mistakes I've made and uh, save you that aggravation but there's no way of knowing whether or not you want to do something or like doing something until you actually go ahead and do it so for example I never liked watercolor paints when I was younger I was always into acrylics and then I saw a painting hanging in, actually in a hospital as I was waiting for an appointment. And it was this really beautiful painting. And I was staring at it and I realized it was watercolor. And I was thinking, you know, I should try watercolor again. I'm older. I might really enjoy it. And now I love watercolor. So even something you tried a long time ago, you might like again. All right, we're getting there, sorry. I know it's a slow process. And I'm, I am moving faster than I would if it was the no camera rolling. But it's still kind of tedious to watch. So you can hit that fast forward option. day I'll get some editing. Well, right now I need a computer. That's why I can't edit. I don't have the software to edit because I don't have a computer to do it on. So when I can save for a computer, which I haven't been able to do because we're putting all our money into this building this house right now. I will get a computer and I will get some software and then I won't subject you to this boring routine. 
of watching me do every tiny little bit. Unless you're just having a coffee and enjoying it. That's cool too. I do that a lot with my favorite YouTubers. All right. We're getting there. We're in the home stretch. So I'm just going to get into these tiny ones now. Here. And I like to use this finger, kind of helps me stabilize the cutter a little bit. out of here see what we've got revealed to us Just get these tiny little details here. They'll they'll need cleaning up for sure. All right. Okay, so around here I'm definitely gonna need to tidy up a little, but I think I wanna give it a stamp first. So I'm going to cut away a lot, just so I can cut it with my scissors, I think. The only danger of this is you don't have a lot of resistance to make any corrections, but we're not going to go into huge detail because this video will be so long. And I just want to show you how fun it is to carve. into wood carving maybe that could be fun right now I really enjoy these stamps okay let's try that so I'm just gonna cut away the rest you could of course carve it away prefer for this I'm going to cut always use these pieces. Just going to tidy up a little bit here. Throw that in the bin. My messy desk. Okay. So I definitely have to carve this away. We'll do a quick print here and see where we're at. paper. Where's my little print book here? Load up some ink. I'm just using this Coca, Coca Close to My Heart ink. It seems to be my go-to when I print. I really like the color of it. Try not to bang because I know this table echoes in the phone. That's what I'm recording. So automatically you can start to see where you need to cut pieces away. And then we've got a very flat paper picture right now. So we're gonna put some details in it next. So I'm just gonna press it down here. Oops, there we go. So there's our beginning. So now I can look at this and see where I wanna tidy it up. So I can 
see it's a mirror image so what's on this side will be on this side so I'm going to take away some of this and be careful of your hands take some of this away that's printing double that I don't want so right here and then I have some bits and pieces here guy here, over here, just cleaning him up, and then we'll put some definition in him. Okay, this right here needs to go. I got rid of that line. I got rid of those. Get rid of that. Nope, that's right there. Okay, clean this up a little bit. So see how there's no resistance anymore because I've cut away the excess? It gets difficult to carve. So normally I would have kind of worked on it a little more before I would have cut all that away, but I want to get rolling on the video here. So I don't like this part either. So that was my drawing. So I think I'm gonna kind of correct that by taking a little bit off here. Just kind of even it out. All right, now I'm gonna go to my thin one. I'll find him, my real tiny guy. And then we'll start putting some detail in. So I want to kind of visually separate the shell of the beetle from this side here. And go up. This is where I go much slower. And you can see you really don't have to go in deep to create a mark. So you see how thin that piece is. So that's going to definitely show up in the sketch of this guy when we go to stamp and print him. So any little ding or mark that you put in will show. So I'm just gonna put a few in here. I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry. And we'll show you how that prints up in a second. And then you can just keep playing back and forth until you get what you're after. Okay. Put a few in his head here. These ones I want a little bit more messy, a little bit more texture. Just a little bit here, maybe a little bit deeper, so a little bit wider. And then I want to kind of incorporate those segments in here as well. Just by putting a gouge in every little segment as best I can until they get too small. So I'm just doing every little one. Oh, am I even on? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Am I even on camera there? It's down so low, couldn't see. Sorry, I hope you didn't miss all of that. Actually, I'm going to go this way, segment underneath here. Sorry, I was bringing it close to my eyes. Just a little texture in his horns. His legs here. And you can decide how much texture and interest you want to put in to each piece. So 
All right, let's maybe stamp this and see where we're at. So you want to make sure there's no debris in the way. And you will get dirty, so my hands are getting dirty. Get this out of here. Stamp them again. So you can see those little markings. So already I know I want one right here. Okay, that fly, a fly buzzing around. You might hear him on the camera there. Give him a stamp. And there he is. He's kind of cute. So I want to put some detail up here. I think I'll give him a little bit of texture in these legs as well. Kind of separate the legs from the body here by giving him a line going up the side. Just a little something. Again with the segments. So if you're doing something like a flower, you could put so many details, petals and um, curves and things in the in the leaves, all kinds of fun stuff. The possibilities of these are pretty endless. And again, so unique to you and your carving. So I think I'm gonna give them some eyeballs. So I'm just gonna take a little chunk out of each side here. Try and make them even. And then maybe a little detail in his forehead. Just a little something. All right, let's try that. Make sure there's no debris again. Flip it over, let's grab a new piece. So I like these little stamp books. I just keep all my stamps in there. Okay, this is probably be it for him for now. So the video's not too long, but you get the point. I think I would like to clean up right here messy edge. Let's put him right in the corner here of this page. And now you have your own very unique stamp and that you can create a collection of them. Because why not? They're so fun. Oh, he didn't turn out so good. Let's try again. It's a different paper, so I need more ink, I think. Sorry, I have to bang. Go load them up good. Let's this side. A little bit more pressure, maybe. And we can see that more detail. There we go. I like them. It's pretty cute. I think you turn out good and maybe clean up right here and take away a little bit of these chunks just so that um, they don't print all of them print. But you can see you can just keep going with more and more detail and how much fun they are. So that's it for today. So there's a little collection of insects because why not? How much fun are these to put in your journal? Big ones, small ones, little ones. And you create your own, very own collection of stamps. And then create your own little folder to hold all your stamps in. From like the beginning to the end here of how you made them. I think that's really fun. Anyways, that's for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long for you. If you do, hit the subscribe button and the like button. I'll probably have some of these prints on my Etsy store at some point. And if you want to support the channel uh, through Etsy, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, thanks again, everyone. Take care.
Bye.